Welcome to the channel friends. So today's project is taking care of the clutch master cylinder on my C6 Corvette ZR1 2012 uh, year model and I've already gone ahead and taken the master cylinder out and I want to go over really quick kind of like the key points you want to know when doing this. Uh, it is easier to access and to pull out the clutch master from this area here so remove this panel from the the inner wheel well very simple couple bolts couple uh push pins plastic push pins and you have full access to the inside here where the clutch master will sit and then it will pull straight out of that kind of that area right there i already went ahead and wrapped it with heat sleeve so i want to show you what i did so i have the new rev which has the black reservoir so let's go take a look at that. Here is the old one. As you can see really quick, this is where it disconnects. There's a pin that comes out of that, like a clip, sorry, that pulls out of that. And then you rotate this out of the firewall. And there's also a clip that's attached to the pin that rides on the top of the lever, the clutch lever uh, pedal, I should say. So once you remove those those pieces there, those fasteners, this will rotate out and you can pull it straight out of there. I did go ahead and remove the reservoir and plugged it. That way I could just slip it through that port on the bottom there in the inner wheel well area. Otherwise, you would have this hang up as it's coming down. So I advise to remove this. That way it's just an easier um, you know, removal uh, from that same area I was talking about. So. This here is the, the new updated model. It has the black res, which I'm actually going to go ahead and, and swap out to the original because I want to be able to see the, the, the color of my fluid. So, but it comes like this, I should say, without the heat shield. I put all this heat shield on here uh, to prevent the fluid from boiling or getting super hot because the headers are right there cooking on these lines going to the slave which is this one right here. So I also wrapped the slave line going to the bell housing with this same wrap. Uh, that was not easy. That was kind of hard. I'll put pictures on the, on the screen. What I did was actually is pull the other side of this line down towards the headers, alongside the headers, and I was able to pull it down and be able to wrap it and have clearance that way. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do it when it's in the car. So I was able to pull that whole thing down and then I was able to slide that on inch by inch and kind of Velcro it on uh, like as you see it here. So that way the whole thing is heat sleeved. It's protected from the heat coming off the headers, which is a lot when you have a thousand plus horsepower uh, car. So that's the new updated model. I'm going to go put this in now. I just wanted to make sure all my heat sleeving was correct. Got everything situated, took care of that, took care of the car side. And um, that's pretty much it. It's a very simple install. You're just going to take your time. It's kind of like a tight area, so uh, it's kind of frustrating when you're working on this car because everything is kind of tight. So that's it right there. I'm going to go ahead now and install it, and then I'll wrap up with a few uh, key points at the end uh, once I'm actually done completely installing the Clutch Master. All right, guys. So as you can see, the car is back together. Everything went well. I actually had some trouble with that clip on the factory quick disconnect uh, between the two lines and I'll show you uh, what the trick is but as you can see I put back my original reservoir and cap because I want to be able to see the color of my fluid the one that comes on the replacement which is the new rev uh, is black I don't know why they would do that besides signifying that it's the newer rev but then you can't tell the color of your fluid by just simply looking at it. So I went ahead and switched that out. Everything is completely heat wrapped. I mean everything, including all the way up in here in the slave line. That's fully wrapped now. And everything on this side is wrapped as well. So everything's put back together. Looks good. I'm happy with the results. So time will tell if this actually works, you know. Uh, if it you know it fails again, I'm gonna have to maybe consider the tick performance clutch master cylinder 
Uh, but hopefully I won't have to do that. Eventually I'll be doing a monster clutch. Maybe this winter, we'll see. The car is going to need a clutch. It's still on a factory clutch, but I'm doing pretty well uh, with the power level I have, especially considering that it's over a thousand wheel. So I'm going to use as much of that factory clutch as I can, uh, <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and get the monster triple uh, and then put that in. But some updates, you know, I've been cleaning up the engine bay, refining it, changed the water inlets, got the black anodized ones, you know, some stuff here and there. I went ahead and installed a factory GM four bar sensor. That is something that is uh, not direct plug and play. I had to modify a couple things on it and you have to recalibrate it in the actual, um, in the system. So I'm not gonna cover that in this video. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you really quick the old master uh, to show you the clip. So the main issue people have with this uh, when reinstalling it is that once you slip over the outer piece, it's very hard to get the clip over. It's very tight in there. You can't see what you're doing. Not a lot of light. Uh, I was having a lot of trouble just trying to push this thing into place with the clip in place. Now, if you have trouble with it, the best tip I can give you is to take that clip and spread it open a little bit, but test fit it on here as well, because you want to still have some retention on that, on that groove. So I spread it open little by little till I felt it just barely grab on this, on the inside of the groove, which meant it's going to positively lock in place. And then that way it would actually function and uh, not have any issues. So by doing that, I installed the clip on the other piece. And then I went ahead and forced this side and the other side with both of my hands. I reached up, up near the headers and then I was underneath the car and then reached over with my other hand through the wheel well. And I pushed and squeezed as hard as I could. And then eventually I could... Um, feel it like kind of wiggling and then it snapped in place and then you want to hear that snap and then you're good to go but that's the trick right there is to spread that clip that way there's less interference but make sure you test fit it because you don't want this thing um being too loose and then coming apart on you when it's under pressure when you go ahead and you know press down on this on this push rod which is actu actuated by your your lever your your clutch pedal so make sure that locks in place and then you're good to go but that's the install. Um, I wish I knew this tip. I figured it out a day later. I came back at it, kind of, you know, gathered my thoughts. And within two minutes of me spreading that clip and then reattempting it, I was done. And uh, I was so happy. But that's going to be it, guys, for the video. I really hope you enjoy this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please place them down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.